again, sticking with the Premier League, this is a bit of a heavy subject, so I'm going to lead into it. Premier League clubs only have around three weeks left to submit a legal notice about potentially launching a claim for damages against Manchester City relating to the 115 charges. Now, the 1980 Limitation Act underlines and in that entities must submit a legal notice to reserve suing rights within six years of initially learning of a contract breach. Now, the reason I brought this up, David, was one, to get your thoughts on it, but also it's six years now, six years since this investigation has been launched. And the fact that we're going to see Premier League clubs have to register the potential to sue Manchester City for breach of contract before we even know the outcome, it does speak to how long this has been dragging on. Yeah, it just speaks to how utterly depressing the whole affair is, really, and the fact that that football, in English football, finds itself in this situation. It should never have come to this, really. I mean, you know, once you allow the kind of invidious influence of state ownership to seep into your football, then this is what you're opening yourselves up to. And, you know, it is interesting with that deadline coming. I'm, I'm sure there will be clubs queuing up to, to do that and register an interest in and potentially soon because you know we we don't know which way the 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 case is going to go but you know judging by the apt case city weren't able to get what they wanted out of that one you'd like to think that some of the charges are probably going to stick um in the in the 115 case so it's um yeah that's a but it but the whole thing it's it is it's just utterly depressing that it's come to this and um you know you, you He's kind of sick of talking about it, but but it has to be talking about talked about, and you don't want it to just go away because ultimately, if there's wrongdoing has been found to be done, then then it has to be punished. But it's um yeah, the the fact it's been going on for six years and we're still not there. You just you know the, the the dream situation is that a verdict comes in quite soon, and then once we've got that verdict, City accept the punishment, or or otherwise they, they get found completely not guilty or whatever, and it just goes away. But I also think there's going to be further legal challenges beyond that, so. Yeah, it's just a, a depressing chapter that's going to continue to get worse over the, over the coming months and years, to be honest. It is sad because we have a great product in the Premier League, the most watched league around the world, so much money coming into the game. And it feels like there's almost one bad actor in there who are potentially trying to start a civil war within the Premier League over certain aspects. And as you said, dragging on for six years, I think fans are just grown tired of it. And they just want the case to be closed one way or the other so everybody can know what they're facing up to. And also, you know, you're probably asked a lot. I know I'm certainly asked a lot about potential punishments. How do you even begin to guess or figure this out? Because this could be probably the biggest scandal in sport in my lifetime if this is proven. Yeah, well, I mean, the only indication we've got is what, for example, the, 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 you know the the um, what happened with Nottingham Forest and Everton around their charges. Now these were singular charges they got found guilty of and ended up in uh, for for financial breaches, and they obviously ended up in sort of you know, up to ten points being deducted. I know it was appeals and it was back and forth and changed a little bit, but you know that was the initial st- sanctions laid down. And you think you know if for one breach that you fight is is to get that many points deducted, and you're talking about. Well, it's more than one one five charges, isn't it? I think it's something like around one hundred and thirty now. Um, you know, one hundred and thirty charges. You, you're talking about relegation into well, potentially out of the Premier League, out of the Football League entirely. Um, that that's the only sort of measure we've got. Um, and really, the Premier League wouldn't have to make that many charges stick to to get that verdict either. I imagine. And, and one of the things I always say is that one of the verdicts I, I can imagine going in their favour is non-compliance because I think City have been fairly clear in that they don't wish to comply with the Premier League and they don't believe in the rules and they, uh, you know, and they, and they don't want to hand over documents. Um, I think that stuff is pretty well established. So if they make any of that stick alone, you're never even getting into the, the financial doping and the, the cheating around that, then, you know, that that could potentially be really, really sticky for City. And, and if that does prove to be the case, then... Yeah, you're potentially looking at something as harsh as a several relegations, really. So it's a it's a it's a really interesting one to see how that kind of plays out. But as I say, equally depressing, and and we are still a long way from from finding how how that's going to play out. From my own perspective, and again, this is just my view, not David's. Watching Pep Guardiola sit there and say, "We will accept these as we always do, and we want a speedy trial, and we want this to," con- <laughs> and you think, and that's the the antithesis of everything that you've been doing. Like you've been slowing the investigation down at every opportunity. We know they're not going to accept the verdict. I don't think either side will. In all honesty, I think we're set up for an appeal one way or the other. It, it's quite galling to sit here and see him unchallenged. 
at some of these questions where you know he's lying through his teeth, but he's got that Pep Guardiola smile that melts some journalists and they seem to just let him away with it. I don't know. Just I'm not going to ask you when I put it bugs me personally. Well, I, 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 I'm just going to say I feel for Pep in a sense in, in that you, you can't, if you, if you just wish to accept it on face value, and maybe we should always believe the best of people and um, that he, you know, he probably did have nothing to do with it. And there is every chance that he has actually been lied to about, you know, if, if, if this is to be proven that he genuinely has been lied to face to face and doesn't think that this has actually gone on, if it does prove to be true, by the way, only alleged at the moment, I don't want to get myself in trouble here. Uh, but, you know, if, if that were to prove to be the case, then, you know, you could kind of accept that in terms of, you know, maybe maybe he had been lied to, maybe maybe that was the case and he, he didn't know anything about it. Um, but yeah, it, it's, I don't think we've seen any evidence from City's side that, that, that they're absolutely desperate to clear the name. I think this would have moved a lot faster. And that's why I mentioned non-compliance in the sense that, you know, been several reports haven't there about certain documents not being sent over and, and things like that. So um, I think City, if they were completely innocent, would have, you know, could have moved to clear the name uh, much quicker than this, but maybe we'll we'll find out as the trial progresses in terms of why that's not been the case or whatever. But um, I'm skeptical, to be honest. <laughs> 